Coffee, much, much needed, with cinnamon. Anybody else drink their coffee with cinnamon? Good morning, good morning. <laughs> I have to start off like this. I wanted to start off like this one day, and why not let this be the day? Does anybody know where good morning comes from? Well, it's one of those satire shows from the French Résistance, and it's called Hello, Hello, and it is a British satire show where there is a pub in France during the Second World War, and the constable, I don't even remember his name, and I'm ashamed, I should know, but he speaks English with this French accent and then switches words around or pronounces them in such a way that makes the whole thing hilarious. And that's where Gid Mooning comes from because every time he enters the pub, he goes, Gid Mooning! <laughs> oh goodness, if you don't know Hello, Hello, I highly recommend you go check it out. There are episodes on YouTube, and every time I need to pick me up, I go and check out one of those older series. It's hilarious. I love it. Anywho! I managed to peel myself out of the bed this morning. I was extremely busy yesterday cleaning up what is my dining room. When I started uploading videos to the YouTube channel, I was given the green light to just call it for what it is because it is a grow space. Do you see that little birdie there? Yes, I've got birds flying in and out. They visit Siliano. <laughs> <laughs> if I weren't so old, I would think I am Snow White. They come in through the living room door and then they use this door. You know, they have their circuit. So I'm surrounded by birds. <laughs> so do not mind our occasional visitors. <laughs> Anywho, where was I? Oh, yes. Talk about workload. I don't know how quickly this editing is going to be for you to see what I was up against with regards to getting the grow space ready for the orchids to come in during the winter only at night because if it is a sunny day, I schlep them outside. When I talk about orchid shuffle, I mean orchid shuffle, not just on shelves, but in and out every day on a sunny day the way it is like today. Anywho, Talk about, <laughs> it took me six hours to get everything out of the grow space because my house guest has left and move that back up there because it is my storage room while he's not around. And LA wanted a tour of my indoor lights set up a long time ago, but it's a little bit awkward when the space actually resembles a storage room. And I didn't exactly want to do it at that point in time, but LA, I have your comment. And if you're still around, I will show you my light installations. I do not have any brand names. I bought the cheapest of the cheapest you could find on Amazon back in the day when I could have gone all out with the budget. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm in southern Spain. And while I was not working on my days off, even if I had to call in sick or on a public holiday where I was allowed to be off, I would carry my orchids outside. So I never figured I needed anything high tech, anything fancy, expensive. I just needed to tide them over when I wasn't around, when I was at work because I would go out of the house in the morning, switch my lights on, they are not on a timer, and then come home in the evening, late evening, whenever, and I would switch them off. So some days they got 10 hours of light and some days they got 14 hours of light, depending on what was going on at work. It somehow balances itself out eventually anyway. But yeah, I cannot give you any of the pointers. I've tried to look up the brand names. I still have the packaging. It makes no sense. It seems like if you don't have a name as such, then you can't actually find them. So I'm sorry if you're interested to purchase the same things. All I can do is provide maybe the reference number or something like that. Know that the cheapest of the cheap did the trick. My orchids thrived and they bloomed. Now, Another quick disclaimer I want to make is that even though I have the installation, I do not in actual fact use the lights. Since 2021, it was not feasible financially anymore to spend the money on electricity. And considering how expensive electricity has gotten here, I can assure you that there's no budget for supplemental lighting for my orchids even this winter. I did manage 
Thanks to all of you who watch the ads on my videos. Thanks to all of you who sent thanks over. And thanks to all the Orchid Ninjas. I did manage recently to pay my first electric bill using the AdSense money. And I was ever so grateful. It felt like I had reached a milestone. I am far from being able to afford what I am doing right now. But my goodness, it is a step in the right direction and I'm ever, ever so grateful. It's hard for me to describe without sounding desperate. But yes, I am desperate and that is full transparency. Anywho, so if in future videos when the orchids are indoors, you see my lights on because maybe weather doesn't permit us to go outside and do the filming outside, it is not because I'm using my lights. It will be for filming purposes only meaning my orchids struggle through the winter and the first winter of 21 22 including spring was a nightmare i still have mental effects from that experience because it was the first time they just had to sit in the dark for maybe two months three months we had the worst spring i have ever experienced here in spain and i don't want a repeat I am hoping that the spring of 23 is not going to be a repeat and that we just went through a decade worst spring ever, that it's not the norm. So I am going to be switching some lights on. The blow pull lights in the middle of the rack will flicker. And I just want to put a warning out. It doesn't seem to steady on the camera no matter how long they are on. If you have any secondary issues with regards to flickering light, Please take this as your sign to look away. All it is is blurple light. But I want to do this for LA if LA is still around. And boy, do I owe this video request. <laughs> but I feel more comfortable doing it now with my grow space cleaned up, tidied up, and not with a storage room atmosphere. So look away if you are not comfortable with flickering lights. I'm switching on the middle rack right now. So here we have standard blurple lights. They are also right at the top. One bar right at the top, and that top shelf is where my top guns go. They have enough space between the foliage and the light, so that's where I put the really large, tall Cattleyas and Highlight Orchids. Now, what I'm referring to, of course, again, is what I used to do in the past. This is not gonna happen this winter but the installation is set up for what I'm talking about. When you look at the middle rack right here, you will see two bars right up there. They are pushed to the front of that rack. For the shelf underneath the middle rack, the bars are centered. The lowest shelf underneath that has the bars all the way pushed to the back. So the intention and my plan back in the day was to have light filtering through the entire shelf space because of the staggered lighting. So not everything is in the middle. Now, with pots on the shelves, there's not that much light filtering through to other shelves, but a little bit. And I just thought it was a smart way to set up my installation. Not everything bang smack in the middle throughout. And the staggering did work really well, especially for my slipper orchids, which used to live right at the bottom of the shelf where they don't get that much light, but they got a lot of residual light filtering through. Okay, I'm gonna switch the blurple lights off right now for anybody that was not able to watch that because I want to show you the left side here. You will see stainless steel shelves right here. Awesome shelves. They were supposed to be decorative and they are. <laughs> and they are on the right side as well, a little bit more staggered. Also, you know, decorative purposes because this used to be my dining room and I wanted to have my dining table in the middle and enjoy the orchids to the left and right of me until the collection just kind of um, grew. <laughs> the boxes kept coming. <laughs> And, well, that is the whole dining room suite that goes upstairs, chairs and everything. And I use the dining table as my desk. But, you know, another desk has to be in the storage room. It's just, oh, I'm trying to sell the dining room table just so that I can use the other desk. But anyway, so yeah, you see, there was an attempt to be decorative and visually appealing with my orchid collection around me. And that is why I have this long shelf right here 
here. And these lights do not flicker. They are regular shop lights right up here. And on this shelf, I measured out how many pots of 15 centimeters could I line up in one row and then double that. And that is why I bought two shelves because all my 15 centimeter pots go in two rows that way. <laughs> works beautifully and it did work in the past brilliantly on my orchids absolutely thrive now we're going to go down a floor excuse me for the bit of a jiggle here as we move down ta-da <laughs> once i had the shop lights up there installed i realized that my complex phalaenopsis hybrids which lived on the right shelves that i just showed you could benefit from a little bit more light if I bought two shelves and really, really made use of, you know, that space under the shelves. I mean, look how the shop light just reflects down onto the shelf there. Complex Phalaenopsis hybrids, large, big space, boom, perfect. <laughs> and uh, yeah, more orchids came because now I had space and light. <laughs> You know how it goes, but it is funny how everybody's collection somehow just kind of grows and well, we'll find another space for another shelf. Why not <laughs> while we're at it? And then a wonderful, wonderful anonymous viewer said, I cannot see that empty space on the lower shelf down here <laughs> because that is where my summer bloomers would reside on occasions and I would, you know, switch and swap the complex hybrids and the summer bloomers back in the day. So as a Christmas gift in 2020, I received a daisy chain of separate lights, but they're all daisy chained together for the shelf down below for my summer bloomers. These are full spectrum. They are also not a named brand. They were super cheap, but they are amazing because i could actually put this row of lights on a timer the switch allows for that it's amazing and my summer bloomers absolutely loved it so you know that was one of the workloads that i could spare myself back in the day but i didn't have that many summer bloomers so it really didn't matter my main focus was to get the top guns outside as fast as possible and back indoors starting 5 p.m with the ones that were not temperature tolerant because if i start at 5 p.m with about 85 orchids or <laughs> Or, or something around there. <laughs> then I need to take the warm and hot growers in first because by 6 p.m. the temperatures would have dropped from let's say 17 degrees down to very quickly 13, 14 degrees by which time the more temperature tolerant orchids could come inside but the warm and hot growers were already inside if that makes sense. I hope I'm not confusing you and I hope I still have you here and if you think that all this effort in the winter warrants a thumbs up I would very much appreciate it because I probably will never get around to filming my orchid shuffle because it's just go 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 out 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 in 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 there is no way I can set up a camera Oh, well, I say that now, we'll see how the winter goes, but it, it's really, it's a time frame that I have set for myself. The moment I get up, I make myself coffee, make sure my cup is somewhere within reach. I go by two pots, two pots out, walk back empty handed, coffee, sip, two pots, <laughs> like that. It takes me about an hour, an hour and a half without interruption to do that in the morning and at night. Now, I am unemployed, I have the time, but it's also more important for me now to do this, seeing as my orchids would otherwise live very, very dark in comparison. Even the shop lights themselves give off a lot of light. This is now a sunny day and you can see how this corner here, it's pretty dark. Now, granted, in December, January, bit of February, the light will come all the way and reach all the corner right to here of these shelves but what, for 30 minutes? Not more. That is hardly enough light, for example, for a Chantilly Lace Twinkle that lives on the shelf here to the left in a 15 centimeter pot. Still, I am hopeful that uh, the spring is going to be much better in 2023 because then I'm tiding over orchids in this kind of light for about maybe three to four months as opposed to six months. This is a sunny day and you're probably thinking, well, all that cleaning effort, what is going on with your windows? <laughs> I know, 
I have my priorities set around my orchids. My orchids are my schedule. And um, my priority of cleaning windows has been out the window since I realized that I cannot be using my lights anymore. I have not washed the windows because there is no point being. The sun comes in strong at an angle and pretty harshly once the Dama de Noche has been cut back that's leaning over providing shade right now. When that is cut back in November it gets a little bit brighter in here but right up against the glass you can see there's another shelf right there with the Chanel C's right there we'll go there later but you see that shelf there all my super bright light orchids are right on that glass and that means if i clean those windows that direct sun with the heat up against the glass is going to cause the leaves to burn i don't want to do that so i did make a contraption outdoors i think it was in summer of 2020 to filter the light a little bit just so nothing burns let me tell you something by 2021, the winter, I realized it's just too dark for these guys over here. So that contraption with my curtain is history because I need all the light I can get. The positioning in the back there is for highlight orchids and cleaning the windows is just going to cause a problem. So that dirt is on purpose, not because I'm lazy. <laughs> Once upon a time, you touch my windows and I would have looked at you, I would have side-eyed you and I would have said, what are you doing touching my windows? There's a handle. Now, the orchids need to be protected and the windows stay dirty. <laughs> Okay, I hope that doesn't trigger anybody <laughs> that I have dirty windows. No, that there's method to my madness. Anywho, so down here, if you just noticed when I was panning down, you may see some trays upside down, some supplies that have yet to go into the shed. Got my paper towels, I'm ready to go if I make a mistake to protect any crowns, any water axes, etc. But there you can see some what used to be humidity trays and I have removed all the lecker out of them, cleaned them up and scrubbed them because I don't need humidity trays for the winter at all. It's cold enough, it's humid enough. So I'm not going to try and cause a problem that I don't have simply by using humidity trays. Anyway, in 2021, I also kept them empty, but I have a reason that they're still in here and not in the shed, which I would like to show you afterwards and I have repurposed them. However, let's move to this middle console here, which is my filing cabinets. Yes, these belong under my desk. Anyway, repurposed, protected, because the angrecoids live there. And <laughs> the tray that you see there is ready and waiting for tolumnias. All my tolumnias and baskets will live on this tray until the temperatures are warm enough again outside for them to be outside. Yep, I schlep them in and I bring them out and putting them on a tray is so much more convenient. That takes the count down to one trip in and out as opposed to doing it 15 times. <laughs> so that's my Tolumnia basket tray and my Tolumnias live on the sideboard in that gap right there between the silver coasters. Okay, so we're all set for the Tolumnias to come in. I may have a smile on my face, but that is more the relief factor that I have managed to do this job because I was in pain this morning. After six hours of doing this all day, huge, huge puzzle piece of dismantling, moving around, vacuuming everything, and everything had to go back in a configuration that I remember. So bringing the orchids indoors when the time comes is as if I've never stopped doing it. It has to be a habit, it has to be efficient, but I was sore. I honestly was thinking I'm gonna make this project a two-day thing. Once you get going, well, <laughs> don't stop. And I can't tell you how I got up out of my chair from editing last night, but it seemed like I had fused <laughs> to the shape of the chair. <laughs> my legs wouldn't work, my back was screaming. Anyway, so the smile on my face is relief <laughs> more than anything else. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm yapping away, I'm watching the timer. Thank you if you're still here. <laughs> and if, <laughs> if you're still here, I appreciate it so very much. Now. If you're interested, I'm going to show you what I plan to do with my once upon a time humidity trays, how I plan to repurpose them. Okay, orchids that can live outdoors all year round are in semi-hydro pots. 
that's the plan. I don't want semi-hydro pots indoors. It can get messy even though I place my tags where the semi-hydro holes are. You never know. That's why, you know, paper towels. But now, <laughs> 2022, we have certain exceptions happening here and needs must for the time being. You see, a Tolumnia cannot live outdoors in my climate all year round and we have a pot full of a beautiful Tolumnia pomegranate it is in semi-hydro. So my humidity trays are repurposed and will be repurposed for all orchids that have to come inside that are in a semi-hydro setup so that if I water them, the water can just trickle out and just go into the trays and I can take a rag and soak up the water with the rag. That is the plan, including my little Neos in the back. They should be able to live outside once they're strong enough. They are not strong enough. The Neos, semi-hydro, my other one is in self-watering. These are too small. All these things, you know, I'm hoping to get them to strength and then it makes sense again. They're semi-hydro, they live outside. And of course, the two little Tolumnias that I got gifted from Anonymous, these two little Tolumnias will be on the tray and hopefully strong enough by spring 2023 to go live outside. I will do an update on all the gifted orchids. Let me just say, these Tolumnias are doing great. I'm so, so thrilled. At least these trays won't go to waste. And here you can see how close up against the glass these orchids are. Of course, these are indoor orchids for the time being, but the really highlight orchids, you see how they are in full sun. And if I clean that glass, trust me, they are going to burn. <laughs> so, dirty windows, I love them. Anyway, yeah, that's my Cattleya Moscom. You're probably gonna ask what is happening there. That'll be another video. Probably going, going, gone. I cannot be carrying through sick orchids through a time of year where I don't have supplemental lights. If they haven't recovered and made it through the summer of this year, they're not gonna make it through to spring. So yeah, I know she still looks green, but don't be fooled. <laughs> but you can see that my Orangus Mr. Sidii is in spike and look at those little tadpole buds there isn't that awesome ah, love it but i want to show you something else the floor space that you see right here is going to be occupied by my cg roebling my guatemalensis and my maxima highlight orchids right up against the glass and well they're going to be living on the floor but you see that wonderful box there yeah that is only temporarily there because that box is going to protect all the aerial roots of my angrecoids that are gonna come inside and live on the console of my filing cabinets. <laughs> That's their space. But you see how the sun is coming in at this point in time, and when the sun bloomers are down here, at least they will get some light on a sunny day. On a cloudy day, this room is pretty much perpetual darkness. So at least a little bit of light, maybe 20, 30 minutes per day on a sunny day. And of course, the angle of the sun has yet to drop further in the sky. I do get light in here, not hardly enough of what they need, but some is better than none. So I rejoice for every sunny day. Anyway, back to my box. Yep, that's my root protection obstacle because the aerial roots of the angrecoids, they will extend out and beyond the cabinet and I put this box in front of the cabinet so that I don't brush against aerial roots. Now, I never get my aerial roots to stay alive throughout the entire winter, but I'm gonna do my best to keep them alive for as long as possible and alive and growing for as long as possible. And that box is there to help me. Besides, what I thought I would do this year is use the interior of the box as my grab and go stash. Right now, the bag of lecker is in there from the humidity trays, and that's going into the shed. But sometimes I can't get to the shed, be it because of time of day, or it's pouring with rain, or I just don't want to go out into the cold. So I'm going to fill that gap with whatever I need for my sprayers and all that fun stuff that we need to have at the ready, my tools, etc. This is a heavy-duty industrial box, and somebody must have gotten something from Italy that was very, very fragile. I found it by the dumpster and I said, you are coming home with me. And I struggled to actually carry it home in sort of a graceful way, you know? You pick up something from the dumpster and you kind of think, okay, this could be awkward, but <laughs> you know, somebody threw something away. So why not repurpose it if you can find a use? 
I don't have a problem with that. That's how I got Suppressor home. But, you know, you, you want to be somewhat elegant about it, you know? <laughs> it wasn't possible with this box. But anyway, that is my root protection, obstacle guard, etc. for my Angrecoids. It's just two orchids, but hey, every little helps. So we're back with the overview. I hope that you enjoyed this overview. I hope that any noise pollution that I got in the background because the neighbor was watering the hedge, which is wonderful for my Chao Praia that lives right by the hedge. I hope that hose sound didn't come through as hissing. So fingers crossed, <laughs> everything is okay on the sound side. My indoor setup, we're ready to go. I will probably do another once over wipe down because we still have a couple of weeks of beautiful balmy nights of 19 degrees Celsius. I like it that way. And while it's like that, they are staying outside. So in two weeks, a little bit more dusting and eventually the dust will accumulate again. And then I can do a spring clean when they go back outside. And I cannot wait for spring of 2023. We haven't even gotten past Christmas, New Year's, but here I am already looking forward to spring. <clears throat> Note to self, try to live in the moment. Um, okay, thank you if you've made it this far. Once again, if you think that the effort of shuffling orchids back and forth to enjoy the Spanish sunshine warrants a like, please hit that like button. I would so appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. I wish you a beautiful day on one condition, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.